All right, we're going to call the Middlesex Select Board meeting at 5 o'clock p.m. on Tuesday, August 1st, 2023 to order. And we're going to welcome our guests. Um, do we have any guests on Zoom? Yeah. We do? Yeah. No, I see Orca. No. Oh, I see Scott Aishan. Yeah. Hi, Scott. Welcome. Anyone else? Bridget Browning and Peter yeah. Hood and, and Scott. Yeah, they're not guests. Bridget Welcome. Browning. And who do we have for guests here? If you would say Samantha your name. Bowden. Samantha Bowden. Steve, Steve yeah, Dennis. Shelly Deshern. Okay. Evelyn Crane. Okay. Eric Jeter. And Eric. And Steve Martin. And Steve Martin. Here comes Kevin Thompson, our zoning administrator. Uh, on or on um coming up the steps. Oh, he's coming up the steps. Okay. So we are going to uh, approve the minutes of the July 18th, 2023 select board meeting. Action likely. Do we have a motion? So moved. Okay. And a second? I will. Okay. I did. Okay. Any discussion? Okay. Hearing none. Um, all those in favor of approving the minutes of July 18th? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, reviewing, amending, and approving the agenda for August 1st, 2023. Action likely. Is there a motion? Move to approve the amended okay. agenda. Okay. Is there a second? Sure. I'll second. Okay. Is there any discussion? Sarah, is there something we need to know? I don't think so. Okay. Just the... Yeah. Reviewing, amending, and approving. Okay. All those in favor of said motion? Aye. Right. Okay. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Well, we have scooted up to 508, but it's really 504. Is everyone here from the highway department that you were expecting so that we can talk? Yes. Okay. So the highway department update, road updates, FEMA RPA. Steve is here. Review and approve model contract agreement for all town road repair conducted due to the July flood for which FEMA compensation will be sought. Action likely. Take it away, road people. I guess I'm gonna give that briefing. Okay, thank you, Steve. Steve Martin is giving the briefing. Um, I'll start off with uh, all the contractors, uh, Dale Percy Construction, uh, they're on Brook Road. Uh, they have two more locations to rip wrap the bank from the brook to the road, and they should be finished this week uh, with all of their big work, uh, maybe some minor touch up early next week with a little bit of finished gravel, and they will be complete, and they will be pulling out. Uh, all seasons excavating on Lower Sunnybrook Road. Uh, tomorrow they're going to be putting in their second set of twin culverts. Those in that second location, there was ledge in there. Um, so they'll be doing that tomorrow. They've got a little uh, stone ditch lining to do uh, on the upper part of the road, a couple small culverts, uh, but they're gonna be, most of their major work will be completed this week with next week with minor cleanup seed and mulch and the top barrel. Uh, Jay Hutchins uh, on Culver Hill, all the culverts and the ditch line will be completed this week and they have some minor work and top gravel for next week. Uh, Government Hill Road, they should be complete this week, uh, possibly going into next week uh, for some of their finished gravel, depending on the trucks. Uh, Norton Road, uh, they installed a, a new four foot cross culvert uh, and that will be complete by today's end. They were, the culvert was in, they, they still had a little bit of ditch work and stuff to do there. And then they will be moving up, there's a, a pretty large washout just up the road from that. They will be com uh, completing that tomorrow and they'll be done on Norton Road. Um, they've asked the town to go up and do some grading to finish that off. Um, Jason Merrill, um, 
He was on uh, McCullough Hill Road. He completed filling some of the washouts so the traffic could get through. It was a lot of it was up by Vic Dwyer's. Uh, he went to Portal Road, completed reinstalling a large culvert that was there. I believe that was a seven-foot culvert. We, it needs to be replaced at some time at, in the future, but um, he pieced that together and patched it and did a really nice job and got that back together in a road in good shape there. Uh, Notch Road, he also installed a new culvert just on the start of Notch Road. And that's completed with the exception of some of the top gravel and that'll be done by the town or, or part of some bid work that we're gonna be putting together. Uh, Shady Real Road, uh, Eric was going to have uh, Jason Merrill over there on the new blacktop part of the road. Uh, fortunately, it was on the side that doesn't have the finished coat but there's some washout, and some holes there, so he's going to have them saw cut the pavement out, repair that, and put it back together so that uh, Pike Industries can patch it and do their top coat. Um, John Picard and Ray Hickory both uh, completed some driveway culverts. Uh, I haven't gotten any of the paperwork from them or from anybody else, actually. So I. I've been after everybody to, to send that paperwork in so we can start reviewing it and making sure that it's everything's there that we need. And that's all I have other than one other thing is that uh, Eric and Vic and I plan on starting this week putting together some packages uh, to put out to bid for the remainder of the Roads, there's still a lot of damage on a lot of, on, I mean, almost all the roads, and the, the town is not going to be able to get all that done. So we'll try to put bid packages together that make sense so we can put it out to bid. Hopefully, we'll, we can start doing that. We'll start putting the packages together, but hopefully, we can get it out to the contractors by the first of next week. For the rest of the work. Pardon? For the rest of the work, you said? Yeah, for the rest of the work. So we'll put together bid packages. The, of what needs to be done. The work that they're doing, uh, uh, I considered emergency in the sense there is uh, what they have been doing. People, there's pretty large places. It's not where somebody's going to get stuck. It's where somebody might get hurt or killed if they go into some of these holes. So. I'm considering that emergency work. Vic and I and Eric talked about that in the beginning, so that's where we're at. So I just have a question, Steve. Yeah. The, the work that all of these contractors that you've just given the report it's on, but none of it's finished work. It's just making it passable and. and no, it's it's going to be finished it's work. Not a lot of it, yeah. This stuff that you gave reports on today. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Durnda, how do we pay them? Where does the money come from? Do we have enough in reserves to pay these people before we're FEMA gonna, gets us our money? We're going to start. We're going to start paying, yeah. Because, I mean, they're going to probably I mean, we've already got bills us. and orders in there now, and uh -huh. going to go as far as I can with what money I have. And, you know, okay. hope for the best. Might have to take out, just borrow short term if need be, but. Yeah. Um, I think we're okay for right well, now. <clears throat> I was wondering, how does that, uh, now you said that you haven't got any paperwork, I assume you haven't got any bills? No. Yeah. Okay. Bills from who? Contractors? We're getting, because we're getting bills for gravel and stuff. Right, but I mean the contractors that are do, actually doing I haven't it. gotten anything from the contractors yet, but I, you know, we're getting, like McCullough's, we've paid, I think, at least three bills so yeah. far yeah. from. And yeah, I think there's a bill in here for John Picard, if that's got to do with the road work. Uh, uh, the, no, I think that was just moving the excavator. That's okay. moving the excavator. Yeah. So, yeah. then uh, well, there, was, there was even a, oh, Clemens, Dave Clemens. Yeah. Uh, he asked me, well, I got a bill. Should I send it to you? And I said, no, send it to Steve. Because he used 
He used his excavator down there? The, or yeah. one of the guys did? No? Somebody, he talked to me about that. Somebody used his excavator. Uh, um, first, Mr. Frank? A couple of days. Yep. And I don't know what they did or yep. anything about it or if any pigeons were taken or anything. I, uh, that's up to the select board. They, 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 they were, you remember, uh, I can't think of his first name, but I think it was Frank. Kevin? Kevin yes. Remember when we were down there? Sorry, I didn't mean to point my finger at you. No, you're right. Uh, remember we were down there and he had, he said that he borrowed that and they were running that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That day, that one of those first few days that we were yeah. down there. Yeah. yeah. And it was borrowed from that day of Clements. Yeah. But anyway, so. Can I ask who operated it, though? Was he operating it? Yes. yes. Okay, so we've got to have paperwork. We can't well, just, we right. can't pay anybody without this right. paperwork right. in hand. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. And you mean this that we're going to talk about? No, I'm talking about we have to have a, I, uh, a W-9 and certificate of insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if there's no insurance on it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be, you know, a lot of those guys, you know, I mean. That, yeah, this is a requirement of yeah. them and not a requirement of us. Yeah. But right. what about this? I understand, this I understand thing. that, but I'm just saying, I bet a lot of these people, or okay. some of these people don't have it. They have W-9s. Yeah. yeah, that's just a form you fill out. But, right. um, you know, that's part of the paperwork that goes along with FEMA. That's right. why, you know, we... We made that clear a while back. Something to keep in mind, too, is no one asked them to do this. So. Right, exactly. I think, yes, Randy. Uh, I think we touched on this in the last meeting when we talked about folks submitting for repairs that they've taken it upon themselves to move forward with without direction from somebody authorizing it here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked about if we were able to receive compensation from FEMA f to cover those costs that the select board felt like, yeah, we'll submit it as part of our overall package, but it's not a guarantee to any of those people right. um, because we didn't request it, we didn't authorize it. Mm -hmm. And then the big question for me as I sit here listening to this is, you know, the FEMA folks want coordinates, which we can get, um, but photos pre and post as well, even for these emergency repairs that we're dealing with. And if we're not getting the proper documentation for that compensation, then at that point, it's, I guess it's questionable as to whether or not they would get paid or reimbursed for those, for those efforts. Yeah. Can I clarify, are these efforts um, that they felt like they were helping the town or this was on their own personal like driveway? This was in the roadway. They were trying to, this was before we could even get down there to do work. I see, yeah. Like my neighbor was digging out the culvert that was just yep. that kind of thing. And then they're asking for compensation for that. Mm -hmm. There were several, yeah. several people we saw several people out there with little excavators and stuff fixing, like on Wood Road. Yeah, I know. Anyways, they were fixing uh, driveways because some of those people were told, you know, here again, it's like, you know, we hear on the news, don't listen to the news, I guess. But some of our people uh, were saying, were, you know, some of our government people were saying, well, yeah. you can get paid for it. so. Yeah. Yes, Sarah. So, where, what, how soon after the event did these, were, was, were these repairs made? How soon? Like a day. I mean, day, day or two? Yeah. Like Eric. So, all you have to do, that actually, having sat through this whole team's thing, you can, you have a better chance of compensating them if you can document that they did it within the first 70 hours after the event. So, after the flood. They will need insurance. They just will. Otherwise, they're not going to get paid. Okay. They're not. And it, the problem that we're all going to face is that FEMA's going to write a check for everything. And then in a year from now, they're going to come and audit everything. And after they're done auditing, they're going to hand the town of Middlesex a bill and say, these contracts weren't done correctly, pay us back. That's what we're facing. Mm -hmm. Just try to keep that in mind. Do we, 
do we know what like like we had that uh, uh, submittal that showed I think there was what like thirty pages of what FEMA pays for all kinds of equipment. Is that what they're going to pay, or? Dick, man. Yes, sir. I, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you the link to the two and a half hour YouTube thing. Just watch it because they do talk about that. Well, how much they're going to pay? You can use, you can Google, as she's as the Vermont Emergency Management person said, you can Google the equipment, what you know, what the, you can pay for the equipment, not labor, because that has to come from our own policy. But it has to. But the, but the, you can. Google what an excavator costs for an hour or two hours. Yeah, I got that. Okay, so is that what you're talking about? Yes. Okay. There's like 30 pages that listed all that. Yeah. What I'm saying, and and as I understand now, you haven't got any bills for any of this work. No, no labor bills yet. So if FEMA is paying $80 for a 30,000 pound excavator, and these people are charging $150 an hour? Yeah. Do we, are we responsible for the rest of it? You know, FEMA's going to come in in a couple of weeks and they're going to have project managers here ah. and you can talk to them about that. Those are the people who should give you the answers. Okay. Yes, Bridget. Um, I just wanted to mention that money has come into Middlesex Community Fund that's designated for flood issues. Um, and not much money has gone out. So if we get into a situation where um, maybe a contractor um, isn't able to be reimbursed otherwise, uh, that's still two hundred dollars per person per household that they could get back. Okay, thank you, Bridget. I also, uh, Peter. I also think at some point in time, as we work our way through this process. We're going to have to face the reality that some of this stuff is not going to be reimbursed and that maybe we need to use some of that ARPA money to uh, at least partially reimburse some of these folks. But, you know, until we can really get our arms around what it is and how much it is and who it is and all that, I think we just have to that we just have to keep saying, assuming you give us the paperwork that we've requested you to give us, we will do the best we can to get you reimbursed, but we can't promise you we're going to get you reimbursed. And I believe that the FEMA is now allegedly reimbursing homeowners who repaired, who paid for repairs on their driveway. And so I'm actually going through the process to see how that's going to look because um, because we paid something and I just want to see if it, what, how the process works. Um, so that if it works, that is an option for people, but they just have to do it in the next, you know, I think how many days did we get? 30 days to do this? They've given an extension. Okay. They have, okay. 60 is it or? So, yeah. yeah. Okay. I knew it was 60 for SBA, but I didn't know if it was 60 for the regular FEMA. Um, Okay, so, but my question is this, Sarah, as we're reviewing this um, and approving the model contract agreement for all town road repair, yeah. there are people doing the work right now who haven't completed this yet. Is that right? Nobody's right. completed that yet. So we're going to ask them retroactively to, com or not That's retroactively. That's the only thing that I think we can do. We can either ask them, like, for example, Steve's going to go bid out those projects. This is part of, they should sign, the bidder should sign those contracts. Um, this is a kind of fast, backward system whereby every town is needed to, break, to repair their roads right away. We've entered, we've filed a request for public assistance at 4720 through the FEMA portal. And I attended the meeting yesterday, and those two things mean that FEMA will now send a project manager to the town within the next couple of weeks. But the project manager is going to meet with Steve and Eric and Dick and say, okay, what roads do you need to work on? And every town is in the same position, which is we've already started working on the roads. And there's a part where FEMA says we consider this part emergency, like Eric needs to get on the other side of town. And then FEMA says now after 70 hours, it's no longer emergency. Now it's post-flood recovery. It just puts towns in a hard position. But if, you, if each project 
is bid is under two hundred and fifty thousand dollars per row, and you make the three phone calls and we put the bid out on the registry. We are really doing the best we possibly can, and you have a lot of contractors here. That's really good. You're not throwing money. You know, you're not getting your brother-in-law to pave the roads. Then we can make a good argument for that. We just have to give them those contracts and say, sign it. They might say, well, I'm not going to sign it. In which case, that's fine. But if we're going forward, those there should be those kind of contracts signed. That just helps support our audit when we're. We want to with. During the meeting yesterday, FEMA said the number one way towns have to give back money is through contracts. They didn't execute the contacts, contracts correctly. It's the number way to get hit. So try to execute a contract. Try to make bids. Try to make phone calls. Try to do the best you can. Well, and it's in everyone's interest, contractors, well, not every contractor's interest to sign it, but especially Middlesex contractors that we may end up eating the bill if they, they don't sign this. Right. Um, and I just changed the ending so that you, if you guys designate somebody, like you designate Vic Herrick, the, the treasurer, to sign the contract, the, okay. so the select board doesn't have to sign it every time. And is this, um, where did you get this contract? So, it's something I worked on with Bobby Brimblecombe. She is, she is in the, Marshfield is in the same situation to a much worse degree than we are that they were cut off and we needed to, so she modeled that on the VLCT contract, so sample contract, and then added some FEMA clauses. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes, Vic. I had a question, more or less for Sarah, was um, when you said, uh, I don't know, you said something about talking to somebody. Now, there was a meeting yesterday in Waterbury and there's gonna be another one on Friday? Right, these are all the same things. In order, when you file a request for public assistance, you have to attend a FEMA webinar, seminar. And so I did it online because that was my group. But there are going to be more too, but you can also watch the YouTube video. But that you have to sign up so that FEMA sees that, Vermont Emergency Management sees that Middlesex attended. And then you go back into the 4720 and you click the box saying, yes, I have attended this meeting. So we don't like. Steve or you are free to attend any one of those. Right. You, they would they love it. And I also it's also recorded and I have the YouTube recording and the PowerPoint that kind of got a little funky toward the end. Right. But you could watch the whole thing and I can send it to you guys. You can watch it in your living room. Right. It's helpful. I think it makes sense for Steve to watch it if you're doing if you're helping yeah. with the theme of paperwork. Did you did you get that email? I did. Okay. okay. I haven't watched it though. Wait, still got Friday. Um, does the is the FEMA RPA application? Is that what we're talking about? RPA stands for what? Request for public assistance. Okay, that's so that's what you've submitted, but we haven't actually. You you've just put us in the portal. We haven't done any kind of like submission of anything a, yet. You, you just say how much damage do you have? I gave us a million dollars damage on the roads because that it may not be a million dollars, but FEMA's like if you would put nine hundred thousand and you were nine hundred and ninety nine, you'd be like, oh, sorry, you're just getting that much. So, um, so we put in for a million dollars of damage, and we put for under a million dollars of damage for emergency services, like debris, um, whatever costs were incurred on the flooding, things like that. Okay. So we're in the system. Eric and I are both in the portal. So if I die, Eric can go take over. There you go. One more hat to wear. <laughs> I got a question for Dorinda, if I could go backwards. Yeah. You said you've paid some, or you've gotten some McCullough bills. Did they send slips with that so we know? They never send no, slips. I have a bunch of slips. In the I was good. That I was the same. Those. That's the same question I was going to ask. Is anybody because we have to have slips, mm -hmm. load yeah, slips as to be, what road they're going to? Yes. That could be part of my nightmare trying to put that's, that together with all the contractors and. Yep. What went where? So you have all the load slips? Well, I should have all the load slips. Is that just from the town? No, from That's the from, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, because um, I think now we, I know in the last set of orders we paid um, a bill, and then we also, I think there's three bills in here, maybe. Yes, I yeah, saw so them I today. Saw there was they came in yeah. today. Yep. Yeah. So I don't know if they got in this pay run or not, but I, I saw them yeah. 
come through. So yeah, there were three for Mokala in there today. It, the, are they in here? Yeah, was, okay, I yeah, haven't looked I had, at Dorinda, it. Are you keeping? I had, I had the guys keeping the load slips and marking down what loads went where. Okay. Yeah, that was something I was the question I was just going to ask because yeah. I just read that like last week. I did that right from the beginning. So there's probably one more coming because the last I knew it was more like 60. So, okay. so yeah, they got a small one and then yeah. ones here. So there might even be one more coming. Dorinda, are you keeping some sort of spreadsheet that's like separate stuff for this flood? So we're keeping, we are, there's several binders going around. Um, Sarah's keeping one binder for like all the requirements, I believe, right, Sarah, or something sure. like that, aren't you? you I, kinda, have, I, have, I, have, I have files. And files, files, yeah. We have a binder that has all the bills we're putting into it, all the forms that have been signed. And then um, Cheryl gave a binder to Steve that has equipment rates, it has all the invoices, has uh, basically a duplication of a lot of stuff we already have. So there's several copies around. What we don't have are load slips or um, I'll get you those. yeah, um, something like that. I don't know if we need them as long as somebody I've has got, I've them. Been keeping them. Steve will probably need yep. them when he puts it in. Um, and also the other thing to mention when we get down to rates of pay, it's not just their rate of pay. It's um, it's with all the benefits included. So I'll have to get you that information. Um, Sarah. Yeah. Just one other thing, I, just while we're all here, we need to get maintenance records for all the roads. I don't know if those exist. Oh my goodness. Yeah. yeah. So what Pima wants to see is if the culvert was blown out, when was the last time that culvert was cleaned out? <laughs> mm. That, good luck with that I, one. I will do what I can. That's a good answer. Yes, mm -hmm. Shelley. Well, she, uh, Sarah mentioned that you have to have before and after pictures, and, and most of the residents are kind of fix it themselves. Who's going to maintain them pictures? If we're going to get audited in a year from now, and we're going to have to foot the bill, should we be keeping a file and asking them she to give us? I have a file by, I have photos by address in each file. So, so you are having people, people send are sending in. Also, oh, wasn't it Jay Hutchins who did a, who did a, zone, who did a drone? Yeah, Perfect. Jay Hutchins did that. That's a great idea. I've got one yeah. from McCullough, if you need that. Everything. Okay. You know, just, Footage just from Merrill Drive up I've through got that to a... Two days after the flood. Well, when Jason had to park his truck the first night because it was all blown out. So I've got video of that section. Get that to you. Yeah. Sarah, when people are sending you the picture, yeah. does it come through with the coordinates on it? Some do. Some do, yeah, yeah. do. So what if they don't? You know, we're doing the best. We yeah. Can. Okay. So you're not okay. you're not feeling like you have to get a coordinate on every. We could. Picture. I mean, as long as we know where it is, we could get the coordinates. What FEMA know, wants is work. FEMA wants to make sure that no one's if prepared. No, that John P. Card is in charge of the town. I'm not saying this. Let's do this. Contractor A is in charge of the town for pay, repairing somebody's driveway. Yeah. That's the number one thing. Yeah. And do you guys feel like you need help? Like, do we need to hire someone to help you guys administratively on this? You're talking to me? Both of you, like the, you know, both. I, I think our department's okay because we're relying on everything coming in, like pre-coded. And we're paying you, right? Yep. Yeah, okay. And we sent, we, we made three phone calls and an email in order before the town hired Steve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just get that okay. in Okay. Okay. Um, so should we approve this? Is there any discussion that people want to talk about this application for contract for contract? services? Yeah. Can you also just designate people who could sign that contract? Yeah. Um, but has everyone looked through? I just looked through the the I've first read, couple of pages. I think the whole thing. It's pretty yeah. standard, right? I guess my only worry was about paying them. <laughs> like, but like you said, we can we can We're take gonna, out a loan if we have to if or we use. We have to. Yeah. I mean, we have okay. money available right now. This is so. the only section here that 
like it's vague and what they're asking. Yeah. Like everything else makes sense to me. A lot okay. of it's boilerplate type stuff and flow down requirements okay. from other federal contracts, but okay. where the invoicing billing, it's it's not really, there's nothing attached to that. Um, okay. All right. For but, them to enter. So I have a question about that and what we're looking for there. Okay. You want to ask? Well, just, oh. just that. Yeah, you just have that question. Yeah, yeah okay. Just, you know, if you look under the contract, Sarah, if, yeah. I don't know if you went through this with uh, the person that prepared this, but there's a line item that uh, is a bullet. There's no bullet, uh, but it just says invoices and billing with a line for entry. What exactly are they looking for there? Uh, do you know what the number that is? It's just it's under Article on page two. two of fifteen. It's under Article Two, okay. compensation and billing, and it's in bold type um, with a colon and a line for entry. It's a good contact name or something. Uh, I believe they're looking for unit price or or, or a lump sum. Does that make sense? That's what I thought. Well, up oh, above, under good. compensations for the above services will be, and then there's a, a couple lines there yeah. where you can describe right. what that is. Right. Two sections down from that, it says invoices and billing. With a I line think it's an address. It. And maybe it is. Maybe it's for contact I or address. Why don't I just add for... Yeah, con yeah. yeah, contact just, name and address or something. I thought it was vague and yeah. didn't really specify what we were asking okay. for there. So, is it, are they going to know what the cost is in advance though to fill that in? That's what Jim wants. Co well, compensation for the above. Well, service. this so contract would just be for the winning bidder. Right. So. Oh, so it's going to be. We're not going to ask every contract. contractor, no. right? Okay. So, so as Steve and and Victor and Eric put together their bid packs for whether it's a section of road, a specified section, or a road in its entirety, then they'll price that, they'll enter that in here, and then that's when they'll sign the contract. But before we're also asking our local people who have already been doing our work to sign that too. They're said. gonna fill in probably what the price is. Yeah, they'll have to. Wow. Well, that's, I mean, if you're gonna ask people to, to retroactively yeah. sign this. Because it's, it's gonna be retroactive. They'll have to. They'll have to take the aggregate of their billings and enter that in there. We're just going to have to do the best we can. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, we're all in a stuck situation. Yep. So can I just uh, interrupt for a moment? So, you know, I I just barely got a chance to look at this contract, and it's true, most of it's most of it's boilerplate. But the part that concerned me was exactly what we're talking about now, and what I can see is. You know, it's one thing if they've already done the work and they know the price, but if we're trying to hire somebody to do a job, and I don't know how many of these they're going to be, but they're going to be some because you're about to put together bid packages, are we making them say that they have to say that is the price and there are no deviations no matter what happens? I think they can give us... In other words, it's a, it's a contract at a fixed price. It isn't time, there's no such thing as time and material. No. It, no, it no. says the ceiling price. The time and material, if we can avoid that, it's best to avoid it. If you do use it, it has to have uh, not to exceed price, right. which there's language in the contract for that. Um, okay. but, but it did seem like there was ample opportunity to have an approved unit price um, listing and using that so it's not necessarily time and material but it's done by approved unit price yep that's my take on it sounds like steve agrees the, at the presentation right. yesterday it was on time and material absolutely not just don't just avoid it like just they were they couldn't have been more clear they do a big ass right through time and material so lump sum or unit price that's okay like a unit price per job like it will that. cost one hundred and twenty-five thousand to repair this job, this road. No, or a for every truckload of right. material, it's going to cost X to transport per hour. Uh, the material itself, you know, whatever it's going to be, um, you know, inch and a half is going to have a price. You know, four 
and stuff would have a price. They don't want that. No, they, you oh, can they do. do that. You can they, do that. They, don't mind. But they want to be able to, FEMA wants to be able to compare bids. And if you're doing time and material, it's hard to compare the bids. So now that's that's why it's easier if they have a lump sum. Or I can... see. So like contractor A will say, I can do this for 75000 Contractor B says, I'll do it yeah. for eighty. Right. But don't they say what they're going to do within it? Yeah. So then you have at least you can see what yes. they're doing, right? Yes. Um, okay. So... Um, Bottom line is, guys, I think we need to approve this. Wait, does it say anything about insurance? Yes, it does say stuff about insurance. Yes. Okay. Um, with the change that Sarah is adding. Yep. And with the, uh, if someone wants to make a motion on who can sign this um, on, behalf of the town. on behalf of the town, I would say that would be Eric or Vic? Eric. Eric? What do you think, anyone? I think Eric. I think Eric is fine. Either Eric or Steve. Or, I would say. There you go. Um. Well, Steve. I would say Eric. I would say Eric. Yeah, because you're he's, sort of temporary. He's a town representative. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree with that. Okay. How do you feel about that, Eric? Yep. Okay, because who else would sign it? It would be, it says a witness as to contractor. That's just to make sure that somebody would. Right, so could Eric be both? No. 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 Okay. Victor could be a witness or yeah. somebody on the board. Okay. Peter, uh, Steve could be a witness. Or actually probably even, can't their wife be a witness or not? <laughs> just bring it to the town hall. We'll find a witness. Okay. Witness is normally just a witness. It's, it's just, yeah, just anyone. Person. Right, right. Okay, so who wants to make a motion? I'll do it. Okay. I'll move through the contract for what we've been talking about. Allowing Eric to sign on behalf of the town. Yes. yes. Okay, with the changes that Sarah made in that second page about right. invoices and billing. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay, second by Randy. Is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the contract for services for the um, workers who are going to work on the road, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, it was passed. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else on that agenda? Uh, approving the VTrans curve project for Center Road. Action likely. Yes. David, Peter. This is this is the result of the meetings we had down there whenever it was two years ago, right? Or three years ago, whenever it was. Yes. Remember we marched around and they talked about where they wanted to put all the signs? Yeah. We still have the documentation. I think it's uh, probably up in the town shed. So I don't see any reason, I don't see any reason why we wouldn't do this. I mean, the only the only issue I can see is once they install these signs at no cost, it's our obligation to maintain them. But um, it is a safety issue, and we're going to get substantial value having them produce the signs and install them. So you'll have to get people to get used to stopping coming up Brook Road. Yes, I know. Is there going to be a stop sign there? Yes, the stop sign will be on Brook Road because Center Road will be straight through. Oh, God. That's oh, good. God. That's a good thing. I think it is a good thing. And I, what we also talked about back then was in a situation like that, which is a serious situation, you know, maybe we at our cost should put up a pre sign sign saying notice change of traffic or I don't, I don't know what it would be, but up ahead. some warning so they don't go whistling through there. I wonder if we could even have a solar light with a red blinker. Yeah. Serious. I already see myself blowing through that stop sign. <laughs> All right. Is there any? Uh, is there a motion for approving the VTrans curve project for Center Road? I'll make it. Okay. Uh, thank you, Randy. Randy has made that motion to approve it, and Victor has seconded it. Any further discussion about said curve project? 
Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the V-Trans curb project for Center Road say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Okay. Well, we are five minutes ahead of schedule, but we do have our zoning administrator, Kevin Thompson, here. Um, he's going to request to waive the fees for flood-related permits required by FEMA. Action likely. Would you like to speak, Kevin? Uh, sure. Um, let's see, like everyone else, I've been kind of thrown into this. Um, so what I want to do is just waive all of the permit fees for any improvements in the flood overlay district. Um, as, as part of the National Flood Insurance Program, pretty much anything over $500 that's done on any house um, requires a permit. Um, and we need, to, we need to keep that up to stay in the program so that anyone that wants to buy flood insurance is, is able to. Um, and these people have all been hit pretty hard. Uh, and I'd just like permission to waive, the, waive any fees related to, to flood damage in the flood overlay districts. And that's um, the Three Mile Bridge that's area? That's Three Mile Bridge Road. That's uh, Lower Sunnybrook. Lower Sunnybrook? Um, okay. There's a few other small areas. Um, Cross, right? Yeah. Right yeah, Route 2 where that house is. Route 2 where the house is. Yeah. Um, the blue house and I think the the, the camp down off of uh, Route 12 um, camp down off. right after right after uh, Martin's Brook after you cross the new bridge oh okay it's tucked way down in there nobody knows it's there but I know they did have damage because they have stuff out on the street yeah or Steinberg's um, house is okay. Putnam's still part of that no um, the overlay district actually misses, it, it all stops before Putnamville. Um, there's only one house that might possibly be, or maybe two, and I'll, I'll be double checking those. Uh, and then ongoing, we're, I've been talking with the chair, with Sandy, the chair of the planning commission. Um, I want to try and figure out a way to um, skip over the um, conditional use reviews on any of these permits because then they, they end up involving warning neighbors and, and it, it's, it's a process that takes a month or two in order to get a permit. Um, and most of the houses on Three Mile Bridge Road are, are actually in the, in the floodway, which is even more strict than, than being in the flood zone. So pretty much anything that's done on those houses requires conditional use review and going in front of the ZBA. Um, so I might be back in a couple of weeks with another request. But for now, I just want to be able to, to tell people, yeah, we need to do this work. You're going to have to, you're going to have to, if, if you're doing things, you know, you have to bring stuff up above flood level and, you, and we do have to have permits for it. Uh, let me ask you this. I thought that like when you did work inside your house that you didn't need a permit. If you are out of the flood zone, yes. Okay, but when you're in the flood zone, you have for any work that you're doing, you yes. have to have for a permit, any even if any improvements. Okay, so. so I mean, for, for instance, we have one house on Three Mile Bridge Road. It didn't get into the first floor. It just filled the basement. So they lost their electrical panel. They lost the furnace. Uh, their hot water heater, their electric panel is going to have to be moved up into the garage, up above base flood level. Uh, same thing with the furnace and the water heater. Um, he's already had someone look at the furnace, they think they can repair it. So he's not actually replacing it, it's not, a, it's not an improvement, so he can leave it where it is. But the other things are being replaced, so that's considered an improvement and they have to get moved above base flood level. Do they also have to then raise their house? Uh, that's a whole nother thing. <laughs> I don't understand that. Like, how, so, are, how are we going to get all those people to raise their house? FEMA, so we, we have to go by the FEMA rules on these things. Um, I'm working with the, uh, with Ned, uh, I lost his last name. He's the floodplain manager yeah. for our district. Um, 
we actually have done a tour of most of these houses, figured out where high water mark was during the flood. They're helping me, they're preparing uh, a spreadsheet for me, uh, and then I'm supposed to make a determination as to whether or not the damage is, is above or below 50% of the value of the building. If it's above that, then any repairs made, then the whole thing has to be brought up to standards. If it's below the 50% mark, then any repairs and improvements made, just the improvements have to be brought up to standards. Okay, like a, a standard of, might be that the panel is upstairs. Yes. Yeah, so the standard is that the panel comes upstairs above okay. flood level. Yeah. And, and the furnace comes up. Yeah. But you don't have to raise the house. Gotcha. But if it's over 50% of the value. If it's val over 50%, the then the whole property has to be brought up to current standards. Okay. That's going to be a difficult conversation. With yeah. Steve. And is there, well, this is probably getting off topic a little bit, but if it's over 50%, does that make it more appealing for like a FEMA buyout, like what we did with Rich Road? They are. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've, I've inputted seven houses for FEMA buyouts on a list. And I have a meeting with Lisa Kolb at uh, the Hazard Mitigation Grants Manager on August 15th, the person who spoke here before the meeting. And she is very well aware of our area and has said that Middlesex will be given a high priority. Wow. Because, uh, for example, Victoria Hallahan, whose house was lifted completely up above, obviously got flooded and she's never returning. So I think that is a definite buyout. We'll see what happens after the, the 15th of, of uh, August, but they're on the, we're, we're on it. Okay, do other people have questions? Yeah, and so for, for now, um, the, the, the people I've talked to, I've said, you know, do whatever you need to do to make the house safe. Um, you know, and we'll, we'll, we'll go back and do the permits afterwards, whatever. Um, if we don't have those, when we do get audited by, by FEMA, we can be booted out of the, the flood insurance program. Okay. And I have a question about the flood insurance program. If I live on a hill, could I get flood insurance? Or is this only when you're in a flood zone that you get flood insurance? No, anyone can get it. Anyone, anyone can buy flood insurance. The problem you run into when you're up on a hill is what happens to your house may not meet the definition of a flood in, for instance, water running down on top of the ground and filling up your basement or the first floor of your house, that's not a flood. Right, right. So yes, you can buy flood insurance, but it's likely not to cover what you would like to have it cover. But the national flood insurance, which is what you buy through FEMA, right? right. That is for people in flood zones? No, no that's, that's for, for anybody. anybody. That, is that that's the only flood insurance flood. that exists? That's the only flood insurance that exists. Like my, Insurance company doesn't have a special flood insurance. It's That's all a, through this. I, I don't um, believe so. I don't. Okay. I don't. I've never heard of that. But okay. flood is flood is excluded as an insured hazard in all the standard property policies. Okay, gotcha. So that's why we have this national flood insurance policy, and everyone who lives in a flood zone is required to have it. No. No. Oh. You're not required to have it uh, if you've got a mortgage. The bank will. Yeah will okay. normally require you to have that. So can I ask this yes. question, sir? Did you, did, if before this flood, if they had made repairs or improvements, would they have had to seek these permits, or is it yes. going to be cut? Oh. Yes. Okay. So these, these requirements to, to have a permit to do this kind of work is regardless of whether or not we've had this right. flood. Right. Okay. It's because they live in a flood, this because they flood, live overlay in the flood district. overlay district. Gotcha. Okay. That was very helpful. Thank you, Kevin. Does anyone have any questions, Randy or uh, Vic or Peter? I think it makes sense to waive the fees. Okay. That's the least we can do. Okay. Would that would waiving the fees include anybody that moves into a more extensive rehab or a, additional work over and above just I, fixing what was existing? I guess my suggestion would be to word the motion that we will waive the fees to um, repair the damage. Gotcha. And if someone wants to go way beyond that, then 
we can we can right they want to build like a six-story house or yeah. something yeah. so they'll still go through the entire process the only thing that's changing here is they're just not a cutting a check for the exact for the permit itself yes Shall um, I? I will also mention that this is going to require a lot of my time that we don't have budgeted but there is also FEMA money okay uh, there's a, a it's a newer program I've got the info on it I'll give it to Sarah um, that covers all my work that's related with okay with all of this so it doesn't go in as part of the overall number we submit to FEMA I don't know uh, it's a it, it's a reimbursement of I, I don't have the info with me it's probably part of is that do you know Sarah if it's part of that five percent administrative costs or um, it was something that they talked that was brought up at the team's meeting yesterday where they, they mentioned um, there was a question about our zoning administrator in another town saying, you know, whatever, can, well, how will they be compensated? And they said, we're going to put out a frequently asked question bulletin to address that. But okay. I, I think it is, you'd definitely be part of the Right, it's been part of the administration, yeah. I think, to do so, the whole thing, but I didn't know if this was separate I don't know. From I mean, we've got 55% of the whole project, whatever right. we spend, can be spent on administrative costs. So, and that's decent. Yeah, it is. That's going to be significant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'll be significant. That'll be yeah. significant. That'll be so significant. I, did, I, did, I, did, I did a training last week with uh, mm -hmm. on what we need to do is, yep. is, is ZAs, and, that, and this was brought okay. up. And that is square FEMA. I mean, FEMA is going to reimburse that because you're doing exactly what FEMA wants. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, does it, does it make sense, like we do this at Capstone, like we code it differently on our timesheets. Do you guys have that capability of coding sort of this time that you do that's related on your timesheets? I've only put in one timesheet with the FEMA stuff. What I do is I highlight in pink, so when they're auditing, they can just go through the timesheet, and they, FEMA wants everything written on the timesheet saying, if I spend five hours on a Friday, a day that I don't normally work, and I spend it here, what did I do? I worked on the portal. Right. I worked on gathering information for the flood buyouts. I make it all FEMA-related, okay. including debris, because I worked a lot on debris. So, um, you know, right. that's how I do it. But they want to see it on each timesheet. You make it as clear for them as possible when they're going through the Okay. Audit. So, like, all of our staff knows that to, like, have it be, like, yeah. you'll be doing stuff that's non-FEMA, well, too. So then you just put FEMA on your timesheet. Yeah, I added the column just to put, Perfect. put the time in. And they should note what road they're working nice. on the whole nine yards. Yep. Okay. So. And Shelly has a question. Well, what um what he was saying is anything fifty percent above would have to be brought up to standard. What would concern me is if we're gonna run a cost sheet on what that house is worth, it's gonna be from two thousand seventeen. So the cost is definitely gonna be a lot higher for repairs. Yes, and we're, we're we're waiting yeah. for an answer as to whether or not because we know what a common level appraisal is yeah. and how low we are, whether or not we make that adjustment. Okay. Um and, and that's the number that FEMA wants us That's to a use. good question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. I've also, I'll also be getting spreadsheets on the cost of repairs that we will use as a base. Uh, so everything I got to use the same, the same formulas, everything for every structure, um, and then anything I come up with, the homeowner can always appeal it. Uh, they can they can come up with their own numbers and submit those, and and we can adjust from there but I have to start all with the same okay all from the same base and do you have to generate that list or is that a list that's readily available through like an insurance uh, database or that's something like that that's actually a list that is being generated by the Vermont by the by the regional floodplain manager okay. for me um, and they actually have a lot of the uh, they actually have a lot of, a, a lot of the costs from our grand list of, of what the value of the property is. Um, yeah, you're going to be busy. Yep. Yes. <laughs> We're all going to be busy. Do you feel like you're going to need support? I don't think so. I'm, I'm getting support from the state okay. on this, and they're, they're setting me up. And if I do, I will ask. Okay. The other thing is, I'm done my daytime job in another week and a half, so. Now you'll be <laughs> 40 hours every week for us. Thank you, Kat. 
Okay, are there any more questions um, about uh, this topic of waiving the flood related permits? Um, uh, only that I would fees. suggest that if we're supportive of this, that it's that there's a sunset to it. Yes, that's yeah, a great idea. Sure. Do we want to pick a date? Like, well, um, I mean, and this this could be this could go. I mean, this is for flood affected people too. Yeah. In flood zones. The, this isn't the, for every the, the FEMA money right. to reimburse for my time is sunsetted at 180 days from the event. Okay. So I would, Let's I would just match do that. it with that. I think six months. I think six months is fine. I don't think it should be any shorter than that. Yeah. Okay. No, I think matching it up with that date works yeah. okay so is yeah. that a motion i would make that motion to uh waive flood affected permitting fees um for repairs um to sunset in 180 days from the date of the event and are we just making this clear that this is for anyone in Middlesex? No, this is for the flood. Just for the flood. Okay. For the flood overlay. Yes. Okay. Just for the flood over zone. Okay. Is there a second? Okay. Vic seconds it. All those in favor? Okay. Aye. Aye. Opposed? All righty. So the next thing is, thank you, thank you, Kevin. Thank you Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for your work. You don't want to stay and hang out? <laughs> <laughs> and talk about the flood debris update MOU with the state of Vermont ratification possible. I haven't been home since. Okay, what is that all about? Um, is is that this thing here? Yeah, the semi you remember. And so we we were on a time crunch here and and uh, flood debris. Yeah. Okay. May I speak? Yes, please. Okay. So uh, the dumpsters may or may not be reimbursable for the town. Chances are they will not be reimbursable because. What FEMA wants to see in, the, in, in reimbursing gathering flood debris is a state-approved uh, flood debris contractor actually has with them a consultant from a different company who is just there to consult that every time they stop at a house and pick up trash, or I'm sorry, flood debris, that it is flood debris and not stuff you wanted to get rid of from your basement. And that is the only that is the only type of debris removal that FEMA will compensate. If we went with Casella, we would have to hire ourselves a consultant to sit with Casella and go through to make sure, or someone who's trained to make sure that everything that was being picked up and put into the container was flood debris. So when you look out there and you see the stuff that's by the road. Uh, that is, Cirrus has already been through here and they have, dis they have determined that that is not flood debris. So people put it out, they didn't pick it up. So what we did, because the state of Vermont said in a front porch forum post, put your flood debris out on the, on the town's right away and the town will pick it up. This came as a shock to every single town clerk in Vermont, was we had to hustle to get a contract. And the only people we could really get a contract were with that would be approved and would be reimbursable was Cirrus. So we had to sign an MOU, a Memorandum of Understanding, and that's what you've got now, and that's what I signed, and I would just like the board to approve it. Their Cirrus has gone through today, they went through Monday, and they went through Tuesday. They're gonna do a second pass around. The good news is I talked to Kevin Sudbury, who is with Cirrus, and he's from Florida, and he said normally when he goes to other towns, they spend weeks and weeks and weeks. In fact, he brought cold weather clothing, thinking that he would be here for months picking up debris. But Vermonters, he said, are so self-sufficient that everybody found a way to take care of most of their flood debris on themselves. So they're just going to cut their time short, and that'll be less cost to us. So I hope the board just approves it because there's really yes. nothing I can do about it now. Can I just ask a question about flood debris, though? But yeah. it does include, like, if your basement got flooded and you had stuffed animals down there and baskets, you're going to throw them out. Yeah, there's, yeah, I said, would you pick up a toilet? Yeah, they'll pick up a toilet, but they won't take a, they won't take a charcoal grill. They won't take a, a washer or dryer. They won't take a downstairs refrigerator. Someone will take the washer or dryer, though. Well, to do that, what I did was I talked to Boldix and had, and Kim said we could do two things. You could put down a, a metal recycling bin, or else I can just get some of these scrappers I to see. come through. And the scrappers themselves, some of them were flooded out. They needed the money. So I said yes. Once again, an executive decision. Sorry. No, that's great. But okay. it doesn't cost the town anything. They get money. 
Any and, uh, questions about this, folks? So, I, I hate to bring this to you, but there was no... No, one. it's fine. Okay. Any questions from the board? Are we contracting with them, or is that... I'm sorry? Randy just had one question. Oh, okay. So I agree. You just made a comment about something that put a question in my head. It, as is, we're contracting with them, not the state, correct? Well, we're contracting with the state, which is contracting with them. This MOU is with the state. And if there's a paragraph here that is the, this, the part that's a little tricky, which is that the state may come back and shift some of the bill to the town. Yeah, I saw that. But we don't yeah. know how much, and we don't yeah. know what percentage. It's um, seems like that's every time we turn around. That's exactly right. <laughs> and we understand that the Casella dumpsters that we put out there, we're just going to pay for, which we've already talked about. Well, FEMA said hold on to your receipts. Okay. All right. So, is there a motion to approve this MOU with the state for yeah. debris removal? Okay. Peter, second. Any seconds? Just ratify it. Thank you. Randy's seconding it. Sarah, is there any further discussion? Okay, hearing none, all those in favor of approving the MOU for <laughs> disaster debris removal and management say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, great. All righty. Um, sick up. Oh, we're almost on time, Evelyn, but I think we can just go ahead. We have Evelyn Prim here to discuss. She's from Montpelier Communications Coordinator to discuss improving communications among neighboring communities. Action unlikely welcome Evelyn thank you thank you so much for the opportunity to, to speak to you all um, I'm, I'm wearing uh, my Montpelier hat tonight I'm also a Middlesex resident um, and so you may recognize my, my name here and there um, but uh, so my position is uh, the communications coordinator and it's a brand new position in the city of Montpelier um, so I'm making the rounds in all of our neighboring towns to just introduce myself and say hi I, I exist um, <laughs> I am a public information officer so I am the go-to person if you have uh, something uh, qu a burning question you would like more resources um, I welcome anyone to email me anytime um, my goal my main mission is to um, basically effectuate the City Council's goal for uh, imp uh, responsible and engaged government um, through effective communication. And so uh, up until they hired me, they didn't have anybody specifically doing that role. So I'm really glad to, to be the um, trailblazer uh, there. And as uh, a um, the state capital of Vermont, we are uh, inclusive of and aware of the fact that our community extends beyond our uh, just city borders. Um, and so when I use the word community, I mean um, inclusive of most of central Vermont because um, Montpelier has a lot of people that, um, that visit from neighboring towns and come in and um, would benefit from the communications that the city uh, has. So I actually brought some show and tell items that are yours to pass around. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so just some examples of some of the work that I've been doing um, and I would love to uh, get that out there just to, the, to our broader uh, central Vermont community. Um, a, uh, a couple of things in there, so I just have a welcome letter that is basically just what I said here today. Um, and then two issues, two recent issues of the DPW News. So that is a, a weekly newsletter that comes out on Fridays uh, by the Public Works Department. And uh, it has been essential in these last couple of days with flood uh, recovery efforts and getting communications out. Um, as uh, we also use uh, social media quite heavily, we're getting into Facebook and podcasting on Spotify. So we're really trying to diversify a lot of the different communication materials that we are, uh, are expanding on. Um, and especially in rural Vermont, um, where folks have spotty internet access but maybe have great cell reception like I do over here on Meat Road. Um, it, uh, Facebook was a lifeline for, for me and for the city during um, the day that we lost power. And I was trapped in my home for several days because of flood water. And the only way I could communicate and answer questions from the public was through Facebook Messenger. Uh, so just some, uh, some interesting um, stories and lessons learned from this flood event that um, we really hope to, to grow from. Um, and there's also a, just a pamphlet of some, that kind of encapsulates the communications aspect of my work. Um, and also on the, the welcome letter has my contact info. So I just, uh, again, just wanted to, to put a face to the name and let you all know that uh, everybody is welcome to, to reach out to me anytime. Um, my, my job is basically 24-7, so I'm happy to respond um, <laughs> at any time. So 
I'll be texting you at 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> She's fast asleep. Uh, and I welcome questions, and I'll just hang out because I enjoy uh, listening to the goings on. Is there anyone who has questions for Evelyn? Anyone on the board or comments? My only comment is, wouldn't it be nice if the state of Vermont tried to improve their communications, which I know they are, but Sarah's already pointed out that some of their messaging was untimely and poor and just flat out bad. So I commend the city of Montpelier for your efforts and thank you for coming to see us tonight. Thank you, Peter. I like this DPW weekly newsletter. And anyone is welcome to sign up for that. You do not have to be a Montpelier resident oh, great. to sign up. So and if you nice. need any help, um, I am happy to help yeah. sign people up if they have trouble with the, the uh, subscription form. Okay. And do you know um, how the businesses are doing right now? Like what's the pulse right now with yeah, the businesses? Yeah, so we've been, um, uh, myself and uh, our, our city team has been coordinating pretty heavily with Montpelier Alive and our volunteer hub leaders on that. Um, they have done a phenomenal job raising them over a million dollars now so far and as I think it just broke the news today that they were saying that they, they've been issuing the first um, the, the first round of grant checks. Yeah. So that's going to be, a, I think, a huge help to, to just keep the recovery efforts going. Um, the, the feeling definitely around town now that the, the massive piles of yeah. debris have been removed is much better. So I think we, we're, we're hit, just about to hit the, the upswing. Um, but still a long way to go, just it, yep. catastrophic devastation downtown. Have they talked about like what the, like are there recommendations for these stores to change their entries or to raise up their floors or something? Like what is? Yeah, so so pretty much every, everything Kevin Thompson mentioned is what Montpelier is going to be advocating for as well. Okay. Um, so basically, Getting your utilities. If you if you are in the the river hazard zone, um, making sure all of your utilities are up away from the flood zone. Um, and in Montpelier, it's two feet above the base level elevation or base flood elevation. Um, and so that means a bunch of different things to different businesses. Sometimes that just might mean raising it up in your basement two feet or putting it on your first floor. Um, so it's really a, a case by case basis. And so our Hats off to our uh, planning and zoning um, and community development department for being the, 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 the people that are going to be helping um, each individual business navigate that. Are there some businesses that have reopened? I think the there candy are. store did. Yep, I think <laughs> the candy <laughs> store. Um, and Delish. yellow mustard, actually, I saw today, which I was oh, really happy about because nice. they're my favorite place to get a sandwich. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's really awful. It's still, yeah. Okay, good. Anyone on the Zoom or in the audience have any questions for Evelyn? No. Alrighty. Okay, well, there's no action, but thank you, Evelyn, for your information. And we can hold on to these right here. You may. Okay, great. These could be things that um, are in the town clerks, I suppose, for people to take. Okay. Sarah, I'll leave these with you. Alrighty, let's see where we are. Ooh, it's almost 6.15, oh no wait, yeah, 6.15. Approving a demolition bid for 28 Rich Road. Action likely. Sarah? So, um, the last time we were here, you guys approved a, uh, a bid for, one of two bids for asbestos consulting on Rich Road. And when I put together, when I was putting together the letter, to, I contacted uh, FEMA, my contacted FEMA, and she said, or Vermont Emergency Management, she said, you know, have the, 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 the abatement person, the company you chose, make the consultant, if they do find asbestos, let them go through the bid process to get contractors instead of making, going back to these demo guys and having them do it, because that was part of their bid and they're still the lower bid. So we do not have to consider asbestos when looking at it. We have three bids for re demoing Rich Road, which is taking it down to grass level, returning it to its natural state. And we have one for uh, Hutchins, which is very is a, the most complete complete bid, which is 42.3. As you'll see, no one has anything about asbestos here. 
Uh, we have we have um, this other all terrain excavating, which is the lowest bid. That's thirty four three zero four, um, and then we have uh, Jer We have Blue Mountain Trucking, which is forty two five. So some of these are really they're 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 extremely they're extremely similar and. I'm a little confused as to to see attached uh, for others for their 6256. That did not come with any attachments. Maybe it's maybe it's I don't know. Maybe I'm missing it. But anyway, team would like you to go with the lowest and best bid. I don't see that there is any distinguishing characteristics in these. There's not. We don't have to consider whether they're minority owned. They're not minority owned. Are they women owned? They're not women owned. They're not bad. Um, they are not bad. What is that term? Not bad actors and just empty up. Bad apples. What's the term for getting? Bad apples? No, there it is like bad apples. It's bad. Bad juju? <laughs> it's bad juju. Naughty. They're not on Sam.gov's naughty list. Oh, okay. There's like a weird name for them. So I don't know. Uh, Randy has gone through this and. Um, this seems substantially lower than 34 versus 42. It is substantially lower. Do you think they're doing it just to get the bid? So, but I, it's not like we, I didn't say, it didn't call them up and say, so the other two were this. I mean, they, everything was opened at the same time. Oh, right, right, right. They don't yeah. know. They were, they were all blind bits. They were all blind bits. Okay. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. So maybe, Vic, do you know any of these companies? You know, Jay Hutchins. You know Jay Hutchins. Um, what's the, uh, what's the second bid that was like 42000 uh, that is from um, yeah. Yeah. That was part Blue Mountain. Blue Mountain, yeah. With the do you know that at all? Asked you about. Yep. You do? Oh, it was. Stop writing more. Right. They're exactly 42.5, both of them. I know. So I but we have to go with the smallest? You don't. Oh, I thought they said we did. Well, no, I mean, they will, when, if they, when they go with us, they're going to say, why, why didn't you why go? Why did you go with somebody else instead no, of why, this person? Why wouldn't you go with the lowest person? I have no idea. I don't know anything about this work. But I, I mean, I just, okay, so I guess the only reason I wouldn't, is there any chance that, does it say here um, that it can exceed? No. No. No, this is, this is what they mean by months on... Okay, so this is what it would cost, even if it costs them more. That's, that's it. They, even if they found, oh, there's an underground oil tank here that I have to remove. Uh, right, they found, so. That's been leaking everywhere. They would. <laughs> that happened to me. This is the only reason I do that. We went with the lowest bid, and then they found all this stuff. And we ended up costing twice as much as they bid. Giving a prescriptive form that, in that manner creates a situation where there are apples to apple bids. So they're all going to be in the same boat if they if there was something that they came across that was yep. unforeseen. I mean, I have if you're if you're looking at um, all, ter all terrain, which is the it's like their raising is a lot cheaper. Yeah, right. Everything else is sort of the same. Um, Not really. I don't know. Yeah, I, make a motion. Make a motion that we accept the bid from, uh, I don't have the bid. All terrain, oh, the, the cheaper yeah. one? Yes, all terrain. Okay. And how much is the amount? 34304. For the amount of 34304. Okay, is there a second? Randy's seconding it. Any further discussion? All righty, all those in favor of accepting the demolition of 28 Rich Road bid from all terrain excavating for 34304, say aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Good. None. They say they'll get it done in 45 days. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Good. Let's see. The next thing is Dorinda, Treasurer's Report. Action possible. Um, I think some of the questions I had I've already asked. Um, the other thing is last week I handed out the bid from um, RB Technologies mm. and I don't know if everybody had a chance to review it, if you want to take any action on it. He actually contacted me last week and I told him we have been just a little bit busy and no action right. had been taken on it and 
So I don't know if you want to take any action on it yet. I know there was questions about used equipment. Yes. I was just, just had a general question. Um, does anybody have, I've been having very, uh, uh, a lot of difficulty even to get into the email or to have any of that, like the attachments pop up. Does anybody think else experience? Are email? Are they? Huh? I've yeah, they no run rack space. Oh, they rack do space. run rack space. I think yeah. they do. Um, I've had no problem with like my space. actual emails. I know my internet has been yeah. horrible lately. And and I gotta I gotta say that like I'm twenty. I don't know if it's 1,500, 2,500, 1,500 feet beyond their maximum distance that they they allow. So I have real crappy. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Well, well I, you'll be getting it, no, it, just, it was working fine. It was working okay. It was slow. I can yeah. I can accept that, but it just won't even It's been up. horrible lately. But there's the, this is just a server quote. They yeah. are supposed to be, we talked to them back when Ruben was here about changing over right. the emails Correct. and we talked to him about installing that computer that's been sitting there for that's probably right. six months. That's correct. And um, I thought the understanding was he could go ahead with that, but maybe I misunderstood it, so. Yeah, I thought he, I'm sorry, didn't mean to butt in. No. Uh, exactly what you're saying, I agree. I, that's what I heard. Yeah, that's what I heard too. Yeah. So, um, but this is what, has, you know, I can ask him again. I asked him, and this is what I got in return. So um, I can reach out to him, tell him these other things are more important. And um, my understanding from previous conversations, it was that the server wasn't expected to last a long period of time, and even pushing it to this point was questionable as to whether or not it was going to move forward. Um, I think as far as I had some questions about refurbished equipment, sounded like that was due to timeline. Um, I've talked with some IT folks that I know, you know, and they said it's not completely uncommon to see refurbished stuff, although they tried to avoid it. Um, so I don't know if my concerns there have necessarily been um, satisfied, but uh, I do recognize that the communications that we've received thus far is that we probably shouldn't prolong uh, the replacement of the server right. for too long. So, do we go back to them and ask them um, how long, much longer it would be if we waited for new equipment, or is that a possibility? Or do we? I mean, the price will change. I'm assuming. Yeah, I wouldn't be opposed to going back to them to say what's the lead time for the new equipment and i guess the question that i would have too is is he going to warranty a refurbished piece of equipment just as long just as, as long as a new piece of equipment and what would be the cost implication be right i don't think a couple weeks delaying this a couple weeks is going to make a significant difference and i think having that information would be good the other thing i think we should do is is get a price for that other work and a time commitment. I mean, I, you know, honest to God, that was all supposed to be done back in the spring. And now we don't even have a price, let alone get the work done. Agreed. Okay. And I don't want to delay, I, I don't want to delay the, uh, I don't want to delay the service, the server thing either too much. So, you know, if we can get a quick answer on that, fine. But, uh, we need to move ahead. OK. I'll put in an actual phone call to him as opposed to an email. And Lowry looked it over. He didn't think there was, he thought the hourly rate was comparable with other places. And um, you know, he said, you know, if you do go with someone else, sometimes they you know, start you out with starter fees. You know, they're lower, and then they raise their prices. Did he say anything about the refurbished equipment? Um, no, he said he said that there that he was wondering why um, he he was looking online at Dell and he came up with thirty four hundred that included the operating system and user licenses, but that 
RB came out with 5,300, but then he says, but he may know something about availability that isn't apparent on Dell's website. Um, and then he says, I think you could ask if a cheaper server would work, work well enough, but he may have chosen what he considers a bulletproof machine, so it's always zippy. Because Lowry doesn't know exactly what we do here in terms of, you know, the power that the server needs to have. Um, he thinks it's a pretty powerful server, but he, again, doesn't know for sure, like, what's required on it. But I sent this to Sarah and someone, I think. Peter and Sarah. Yeah. So. Well, okay. the question is, we've, we've, you know, we've waited this long. I don't think waiting another two weeks is a big, uh, is a big deal. But I'd like to know what we're going to, I mean, not that we're going to dicker, but I'd like to know what the price is going to be on the, on the email and on setting up that computer and when they can do it and why they haven't done it. I mean, we gave them the go-ahead to do that, I believe. Didn't we, Dorinda? Well, that was what I thought, and that. but then I said, well, maybe we did, told him he had to wait till July 1. I, I, I don't remember exactly now. It's been so long ago. That was like last November, I think, October or November. OK, is there any action? No, is there anything else you want to share, um, Dorinda? No, I don't think so. All righty. Any Thank questions you. for Dorinda? Nope. All righty. OK, so now we're on to other business. The Welch Park update, Peter. <laughs> Nothing to say? Nothing to say. OK. I left, I left, I mean, somehow, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to go down there, put on my hip boots, and walk into his office and sit there until he produces whatever document he's supposed to produce. I'm a little frustrated because I leave the messages and he doesn't get back to me. Same old story. Since the flood, everybody's gone dark. Okay. But anyway, I know what my mission is. All righty. Um, the orders, we have those. I'll sign those. I Thank you for sending those along earlier, Dorinda. I did actually open them up and review go. them. And yeah, I sent a message you. to um, BIA saying the check's in the, the mail. mail. Yes. <laughs> We just signed it here. Yeah, so. I have a question though. I thought I was late in doing number four, invoice number four. Yeah, but you hadn't sent it to us, I believe. Remember when you talked to me afterwards, you said, oh yeah, I found it. I don't think I sent it to you or something like that. Right, and I'm just wondering, did we ever pay them for invoice number four, which was? Well, if you hadn't sent it to us and okayed it, no, they wouldn't have gotten paid, but what one is? This is this is invoice number five. I this think. is invoice number five. Yeah, I'll I'll look we again just to make one sure. Not too long ago for VIA. I know I that know was this that one, was... but then I remember thinking that it had been well, that's, like a month delay. This is the one that's in here, but I think we just signed one. I thought we had oh, so okay. I think so. All right, so maybe that was it. I, I'm maybe, thinking I, we so did. So they're yeah, so they're close. So I think then we probably are, and they usually tell us if. Something's a, a mess. They'll squawk. If I think um, we're almost through. Yeah, we're almost uh, done. Yeah. yeah. Like, so we have a meeting tomorrow, actually. Okay. Um, at 3 o'clock on Zoom to do the final, um, not for the town, but like our final subcommittee meeting. Yeah. Um, and then we'll invite them here to the town. This for that. services through 6.30, so. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, so correspondence Samantha Bowden email. Yes, this Samantha has sent an email to Peter and me saying what happened with the Samantha, you remember you're here. Yeah, yeah, the letter the regarding letter. the road that was supposed to be sent out. I was hoping to get an update from Peter. Okay. Um, Peter, did you hear Samantha? A letter yes, about I'm Mead Road. Just wondering about the letter. Yeah. I'm wondering about the letter also, because we were supposed to get a draft draft letter. But I will follow up. I'm sorry, I haven't followed up in the last couple of weeks, but I will. Thanks. OK. This is about the neighbor putting yes. things yes. in the road. OK. All righty. Um, is there any other matter that may come before the board? We have a couple people on the Zoom that are visiting. I didn't know if they had anything to say. Bridget, do you have a question? Um, I just wanted to say that I was helping the Conservation Commission implement the NRCS uh, 
USDA, it's uh, flood mitigation grants. Um, and the, the Conservation Commission has um, asked if Victor um, and Eric might be available when those site visits happen. I don't know if Eric's still there. He's not. Uh, yeah, but, so I guess there's about six, seven people that have signed up thus far to have the USDA folks out to take a look at the site. Um, they say that 90% of the projects that they do pay for are uh, riprap uh, for erosion and uh, debris removal. Uh, Vic, I didn't know if you knew of areas in town where you thought that um, folks might qualify they might not be a, they might not have seen the front page forum post that the conservation commission put out um and two i understand that it's also for public um areas as well so if there were pro if there were things owned by the town per se that you feel that the the the, the site suffered damage this time around there will be imminent property loss if it were to flood again, the state will pay for 100% of the administration and the engineering costs, and then 75% of the work itself. This is flood related? Yes. The only place that I know of, the only places I can think of off the top of my head are in Brook Road, and specifically been said by the Agency of Natural Resources that uh, don't touch the river. Right. So we wouldn't be touching the river. There's so a lot there of would, stuff. It would There's, be, um, I understand Matt, who was on the Conservation Commission, he's offered up to do the engineering work um, mm -hmm. for the different sites. And then, and then the homeowner would be on the hook for the 25% of the, the homeowner or the town, for the 25% that, um, uh, of the actual work involved in doing right. so, um, but I'll, I'll send um, Vic, and if it's okay with everybody for me to reach out to Eric. Are we talking about buildings that are in danger of buildings? If, they're, if they are, right, so it won't cover any property damage thus far, but if the, they come out and they see that, and they determine that if it were to flood again, there would the 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 risk of it, property loss is there. They will pay for the engineer to design the repair and seventy five percent of the actual repair. Yes, Victor. <laughs> I uh, yes, I've I've had people on the Brook Road approach me uh, where there's like 150 feet of trees fell down and they're right on the brook and fell down. And, and uh, what I'll do is um, I'll get a list from Adrian of who's signed up thus far. And then uh, Ma Vic, maybe if you think of anybody else that we should reach out to, they're concerned that there are folks that might benefit from the program who didn't see the front page forum post. Sarah? Yeah, I don't think this has to do necessarily with debris in the river, right? Uh, Bridget, doesn't it have to do with, like, if you've got unstable banks that you can shore up your banks so that they're less likely to flood next time? Isn't that what this is about? According to their presentation, if they feel that the debris might cause future property damage, they will remove it. You're talking about wood debris? Any debris yeah. that is from this flood. Okay, because we were told that we don't touch trees in the Yeah, river. I thought don't they said to leave the river. river. Yeah. yeah. I, I think I that I saw that as well, but according to the presentation, 90% of their projects involved riprap and debris removal. What is riprap mean? Those are those big chunky rocks that shore up the, the shoreline. Okay. So what is this? project called or program called it's the um, you it's a division of the usda it's called nrcs e uh w e p natural resources yeah and then uh, it's the uh, water let me see i'll grab my folder okay so this isn't the um 
Sarah, did you get any clarity about that other program that's for non-flooded, yeah. non-flooding areas? Here, go ahead, Bridget. This is the program that I mentioned last time around. Thea down the road works for USDA. She wanted to make sure the select board was aware. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I just right. thought you were going to. Yeah, so Sarah know. passed it on to the Conservation Commission. Sandy, Thea, and I got together and thought maybe they could use a little bit of help. So I've been helping. I, I, I drafted the letter to request involvement in the program, and um, the Conservation Commission sent that in today, uh, a couple of days ago. Hey, Liz, Paul Sermonara. Oh, hey, Paul. Hey, uh, and, and throwing this out to all you guys, but but more towards Vic, you know, just just in regards to Brook Road, it would definitely be worthwhile just to get uh, clarity on this of what, you know, what exactly is, what is this covering? What are the stipulations? What what can it do? Just from a town perspective, it'd be a huge uh, advantage if, if we could get any money whatsoever, especially for Brook Road. Again, I it sounds like we're not sure exactly what the guidelines are as far as imminent um, damage. At this point, all we have to do is have a site address. They come out, they take a look, they tell you whether or not you you fit the criteria of the program. Perfect. Tell them Brook Road and Middlesex and let them so, have at it. <laughs> um, so um, Adrian's working together on a list, but um, I, I guess what I, I am asking, so I'll mention Brook Road. Vic, I'll send you a list of folks that are already included, but it's I'm assuming that Adrian's getting physical addresses, not an entire street. So can I just say something about the 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 that those roads that have erosions, that is a perfect thing when the FEMA project guys come out. You look at Brook Road and you say, how can we shore this up? What do we need to spend money on to shore this up? And that's a FEMA, that's a FEMA project. I mean, I think these guys are talking about the river, but if you're talking about the drop-offs and the erosion in the bank, that is FEMA through and through. You wouldn't mess with this. So this is also could be fires, windstorms, and other natural disasters. That's correct. And so, for example, this is these are private homeowners, but the town has to be the sponsor. The so it's kind of like the sponsor. same thing, gotcha. you know, yeah. FEMA is very reluctant to deal one-on-one -on -one with towns. I mean, they do it with individuals, they do, but they don't like it. But so it's the same thing like doing a buyout, they deal with the town. So it's that, the, the town has to sponsor those six or seven homeowners or how many others want, want to be part of this. Okay. Oh, yes, Eric Kemp. So when you guys are talking about this, and she said specific addresses, so like my sister's house, one below mine, 100 Wood Road. This has been up for discussion for two years, having people come up and look at it. And we're down there putting sandbags up and stuff to keep water from going in. And there's yet to be any kind of solution. And then with the flood, it took out everything. So yeah. is this like something where she's talking about a certain location that should be looked at? Well, I think that it would it would be valuable for that address to get on the list. The program is the Natural Resources Conservation Service Emergency watershed protection and i just learned of it prior to the last select board meeting um, but the conservation commission is is volunteered to be the official town sponsor and so the letter was submitted um, basically they say all you have to do is ask to be included in the program um, we follow up with a list of sites uh, then the usda folks come out with probably Matt, uh, who would be the engineer that that these folks would be hiring. And hope and folks were hoping that either Vic or Eric could possibly be involved as well. But I, I didn't make that commitment. Okay. I was just questioning that because like I said, um that 100 wood road part where my sister is located is like even now that they've come up and I you know, the town's done a great job doing what they can get do to get our road open, but every rainstorm now, it's potentially pouring into her house. So I'm down there at midnight, one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning, putting up sandbags. So I just think it needs attention quicker than. Yeah. Um, I'll, 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 I'll go ahead and um, um, I'll reach out to Adrian to make sure that your address is, is included. 
it's actually my sister, not mine, but. What is that street address? 100 Wood Road. Okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, Mr. Kemp, I talked to your, uh, your sister. She was delightful during this whole experience. Um, that road engineering project, that is a great thing for FEMA, for, for, for the town to bid out, to bid out to correct Wood Road. That's a perfect thing. You shouldn't, as an individual, have to worry about town water coming into your road, into your house, right? If that road needs to be re-engineered or straightened out, that can, be on a, that can be on a bid list. That is a great idea, because since Wood Road was so damaged. Because I think what you're talking about is the actual water coming down the town road, right? It's not coming through her backyard, for example, which is what this program is supposed to do. This program is supposed to help private landowners who have water coming from other sources that they can short, use, use resources to shore up. Yeah, I mean, like I, I had the town up there and they said that my culvert at my house wasn't big enough, but I had Eric up there today, the first last storm and it's all coming down the road. Yeah, I think that it's on, I know Wood Road is on the list to be in, Vic, don't Culver, you think? It's only like half full. Say what? Is it, aren't you guys looking at Wood Road as a, as, as a road to repair in general? Yeah, we've looked at that situation between him and his sister for uh, probably five years. Don't you think that if we could, that's something that we could bid out in this FEMA project? That's something FEMA uh, would enjoy paying for. Because well, otherwise, she has to file a claim with FEMA if something's ruined in her home. The idea is that FEMA doesn't want to do payouts. So they they want don't to want to do things. payouts. And if there's something like this culvert is too small, for example, that's a great thing to bid out. Replace the culvert, it's just, just do it, and then FEMA would pay for it. Sounds simple, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> Why isn't it? Why isn't it? <laughs> because it's an issue that happened before the flood. Yes, it's happened many times, and the water comes off the property above the sister. I There's see. a place for that water to go, but they don't want the water to go down there because they have like a landing that goes down to the back of their house. So in this case, it's not the town road problem. That's not true at all. It That's is, the, it is the town road. I've had Eric up there during the storm, watching the water come off the ledge piece that's sticking up above on the corner which turns the water down the road, which makes the road, my culvert wasn't even half full of water when Eric came up. Yeah. So the drainage is not working properly from the town. Yeah. It's been filled. We got pictures of it that we sent in to you guys just recently that you guys have raised that road almost a foot and a half, which leads it right to that house. So it sounds like maybe we need to but why don't we, you know what, Mr. Camp, I'm going to just suggest that, um, Eric, I'm just going to suggest that S Steve take a look at it and maybe, That's a good idea. and maybe we'll look at it and just make it a decision whether or not this could be part of the FEMA improvements. That's my recommendation, right? All yeah, right. It, it was like, that's the part of the wood road they talked about over the residents. Yeah. It was myself and four other people with our tractors and stuff. They actually right. put a road for us to get down the road. Right. Okay. I mean, we got them up from the town at that point. We just made our own road. But you would, you now, would agree. You would agree. Everything out of let, my let driveway. Let it, just let it, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, th thank you. I'll just put it in the minutes and pass it on to Steve. How's that? Yeah, that I don't. Mean? I don't mean to negate what you're saying, but you would agree that this issue has happened many times before. Yes, we brought that to the fire. Oh, it is before the flood. We brought it up to the attention. Eric's been up. She's my little sister has called everybody to find okay. out who will come up and do something with it. Mm -hmm. And now with this past flood, it was like not even like bad as like just barely getting some water into the house. It was like coming in like a river. Mm -hmm. So we were down there with sandbags and stuff until the actual road gave way enough that it took it down the road. Right. Okay, so we'll have Steve come sarah is that something or you yeah i'll put this, this over to steve okay I've got a lot of wood great thank you thank you okay thank you um are there any other matters that come before the board liz i just have one quick thing peter um yep, go ahead. all of you board members received an email from paula otenti uh i think she sent it out at 10 o'clock last night saying she is stepping away from our emergency management coordinator role um, two things about this. One is, 
is selfish for me. So as, as uh, luck would have it, guess who the emergency management director is? It's me. So I'm whatever she was handling is now coming in my direction. And it was pretty fast and furious today. So I don't anticipate it getting better soon. So I think we do need to try and find somebody to take over that that uh, role in the short term. I will do my best to uh, to do it with help from uh, Sarah and other people. Uh, but I think the other thing, Sarah sent her out a very nice email today. I tried to call her. I couldn't reach her, uh, but I will. But I think we should do something for her. She put forth a tremendous uh, effort during this flood. And I don't know whether you know, I'm thinking about a gift certificate or I don't know what we should do, but we definitely, we definitely need to thank her for her efforts on our behalf. Okay, I agree. We'll do. So Sarah, will you take care of that, I guess? Maybe get a gift sure. certificate for something? Yeah. Yes, Randy? I'd just like to suggest that we push something out in front porch, front porch forum asking if there's interest from folks to step into that role. I mean, it's a you know it's a big role to fill these days, and um, with this fresh on people's mind, you might find a good quality candidate that's interested. Yeah. Can I ask a clarifying question? I felt like before this flood, Eric said, "I'll be the emergency he management did. director or coordinator." We, did, we attended the meeting. He's the, he's the he stepped down as the emergency management coordinator. Oh, I'm sorry, Paul stepped down as the emergency yeah. management coordinator, and then that emergency management meeting. Yes. The fire department, Eric, was the new EMC. Yeah. But the practical matter is It doesn't work. It doesn't work. I agree, yes. But so we really did sort of agree to have someone in the minutes, and it right. was Eric, but yes. really it's, and Paula then Paula took, took over. Right. And so really we're, I, and I agree, you know, having er, Eric or anyone on the fire department, for that matter, doesn't make sense because no. they're usually out doing their duties they can't be in a man you know an emergency management situation so i think we want to make that clear that it's like somebody who has the capacity to and time, and time to like be at a a disastrous event and, and manage it right. honeybee weeks, barrett for weeks following <laughs> and weeks following right right um okay so you're going to put that out there on the front porch form too i will thank you sarah but for the time being, Peter, this is your role till we have find someone. Yes. Okay. Good. I mean, I Any think you know. I think I think the worst the worst is over, but it's mostly calls from people from the state who want updates. You know, apparently the governor was in town yesterday and noted a lot of debris, so he calls up his people and his people call me and say. What about the debris? And I call Sarah and I say, what about the, you know, it's a little, it's a little frustrating, but uh, we'll get through it. We'll get through it. Right. Anything else from the public or our board members before we adjourn? All right. It is 644 and I'm adjourning the meeting for the evening. Thank you, everyone.